Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going through the whole of Edexcel GCC Biology Health and Disease. So this is the last topic on the Paper 1 exam. If you'd like to follow along with this video, over on my website you can download my notes and my Paper 1 flashcards. Okay, so health isn't just about not being ill, it's the complete social, physical and mental well-being of a person. So it's a combination of all three together. Now a disease is any change in the normal function of a part of the body. So if a bit of the body is not doing what it's supposed to, it's diseased. And there are two types of diseases, communicable and non-communicable. Communicable diseases can be spread from person to person, whereas non-communicable diseases can't. Now communicable diseases are normally caused by pathogens. And these are microorganisms that can cause disease. Now cholera is caused by bacteria and is mainly spread through water. Tuberculosis is also spread by a bacteria and is mainly airborne. Clara die ashback is a fungal disease and is spread through the air and this is a disease that affects plants. Malaria is caused by a protist and this is spread by vectors. So this means something has the disease and spreads it onto something else. So malaria is mainly caused by mosquitoes, so the mosquito is the vector. Helicobacter is spread by bacteria, and this is mainly spread through touch. And then HIV is a virus, which is spread through bodily fluids. And then chlamydia is spread by bacteria, which is mainly spread through sexual contact. Okay, so now we're going to look at viruses. And viruses are a type of pathogen that can cause disease. And viruses are made up of genetic material, so either DNA or RNA, surrounded by a capsid, which is a special protein coat, so it protects the genetic material. Now you'll notice that viruses don't have any of the structures that cells have. They don't have ribosomes, they don't have anything, so they can't reproduce themselves. They have to use living cells to replicate. And there are two pathways it can use to do this. It can go through the lytic pathway or the lysogenic pathway. So let's look at the lytic pathway. The first thing the virus does is it inserts its genetic material into the cell. And then the virus uses all of the cell parts, such as the ribosomes, to make new viruses. So the cells hijack to become a little virus making factory. And then the cells go into lice, and this means explode open, releasing all of the viruses. And these viruses then go on to hijack other cells. Now the other pathway is the lysogenic pathway. Now, the virus still inserts its genetic material into the cell, but this time it's going to become a part of the cell's DNA. So instead of using the cell to make new viruses, its genetic material hides within the cell's DNA. Now, the virus genetic material then gets replicated as the cell naturally divides. Now, this keeps happening over and over until a trigger sends the virus into the lytic cycle. So it keeps on dividing with the cell, and then it will begin using the cell's parts to create new viruses. Now, the human body has barriers, and these are to stop pathogens getting in. Now we have physical barriers and chemical barriers. The biggest and strongest barrier in the human body is the skin. This stops any pathogens getting into any part of our body, because it's got this big protective skin around it. Now, if you have a cut or the skin is damaged, pathogens can then get in. The second physical barrier is mucus, and it's that sticky substance that traps any pathogens in the back of your throat or your nose. And then the third is cilia. Now you might remember this from the key concepts video where we looked at specialised cells, and this will move the pathogen along from different places. Now the first chemical barrier is stomach acid. Now stomach acid has a really, really low pH. So if there's any pathogens on any of our food, the stomach acid should hopefully kill it. And then the second chemical barrier is lysozyme. And this is an enzyme. Usually if anything ends in zyme, it's an enzyme. And this breaks down pathogens. And this is mainly found in our tears. Now it's the immune system's job to destroy pathogens. The immune system is made up of our white blood cells. And there are two main types of white blood cells we need to know. The first are phagocytes. Now their job is to go around engulfing pathogens. So they go around and swallow the pathogen whole. Now the second type are lymphocytes, and it's their job to produce antibodies. So on a pathogen there are these things called antigens, and these are almost like a flag. So every cell in your body has antigens, and they wave the flag to say, I belong to your body. But if the pathogen gets in, it carries a different flag, it has a different type of antigen, and this is how the body knows it's not supposed to be there. 
Now, lymphocytes send antibodies, which have a specific shape to bind to the antigen. Now, their job is to rip apart the pathogen. So when you get a vaccine, you're given dead or weakened versions of the pathogen. Now, this is to stimulate an immune response. So this means your body begins creating lymphocytes that can create antibodies for the pathogen. So if you ever do get infected, your body already has the things it needs to fight the pathogen off. Now, sometimes we need to make monoclonal antibodies. Now, antibodies are really useful because they're so specific, they only stick to one thing. And we know they're released by lymphocytes. But the problem is, lymphocytes don't divide very easily. They're really good at producing loads of antibodies, but they just don't divide. But tumour cells do divide really easily. So we can combine them together to create a hybridoma cell. So this is made when we combine a lymphocyte with a tumour cell. So the end result is we have cells which can divide really easily, but they can also create loads and loads of antibodies. Now, the most common use of monoclonal antibodies is in pregnancy tests. Now, antibodies for the hormone found when you're pregnant are put onto the strip. And these are connected to a coloured dye. If the hormone is present, the antibodies go and bind to it, and they bring the dye with it, and they end up creating these two lines. Now, monoclonal antibodies can also be used to find tumours. So it's very difficult to locate tumours in the body. We can't cut it open just to have a look. So we can use monoclonal antibodies. So we can stick radioactive elements to the antibodies. So as the antibodies go and bind to the tumour, if they have radioactive elements on them, we can use a scanner to detect where they've all gone to so we can then find the tumour in the body. Now, before a new drug can be used to treat an illness, they need to go through a series of trials. The first stage of trials are the, are the preclinical trials. Now, the very first thing is the new drug is tested on human tissue. And this is really to check if the drug's doing what we want it to do. The second step is it's then tested on live animals. Now, in the UK, the law is that it has to be tested on two different species of live animals before it can move on to the next stage. Now, the next stage are the clinical trials. So this is where we begin to use humans. The first stage is that it's tested on a group of healthy humans. And this is a really small group. And this is to check that there are no severe side effects. After that, we begin to test it on a larger group of ill humans, so people with the disease we're trying to treat. And then if this stage works, we move on to large trials where we test loads and loads of healthy humans. Now, when making a new drug, there are two things we want to do. We want to maximise the efficacy, which is how well the drug works, but minimise toxicity. So we're minimising the side effects. And this is really important when finding the dose. We want to give the human enough so it makes them better, but we don't want to give them too much so they start feeling more ill. Now, at the start of the video, we said that non-communicable diseases were diseases that cannot spread from person to person. So this means they're mainly caused by lifestyle or genetics. So the first lifestyle choice can be obesity. And this can be caused by lack of exercise or a poor diet. And obesity has been clearly linked with lots of different health problems. Now, one measure of obesity is BMI. And this is calculated by dividing mass by their height squared. Now, another measure of obesity can be the waist to hip ratio. And this is where we divide the measurement of a person's waist by the measurement of a person's hip. And this is mainly for abdominal obesity. Now, another lifestyle choice is smoking. Now, the top picture is an artery of a non-smoker. So the blood can flow really easily through the artery. Now, in a smoker, there's a fatty buildup through the arteries. Now this is really bad because it restricts the blood flow. The blood can't just flow straight through, it has to squeeze around the fat. Now cardiovascular disease, or just CVD, is a broad name for any problems with the heart or the blood vessels. So again, this fatty buildup around arteries can really strain the heart. So it means the heart has to work extra hard to push the blood through. And this can end up causing serious problems with the heart, such as heart attacks. Now, treatment for this can involve putting stents in, which are small things that open up the artery, or by taking a medication called statins, which lower the cholesterol, which is the fat around the arteries. Now, it's not just humans that can have diseases, plants can too. And plants also have a number of defences they, that they use to stop them getting ill. So the first is a waxy cuticle. 
If you've ever touched a leaf and run your fingers over it, sometimes you can feel it slightly sticky. And this is a protective coat that plants have over their leaves to protect them against any pathogens. Now, plant cells also have cell walls. And this again just provides some extra protection for the cells. If this video helped with your biology revision, please subscribe to my channel and check out some of the other videos I have.